lovely imps, today we are going to be hiking Drama Mountain. So strap on your hiking boots, bundle up, make sure you've packed plenty of water, don't eat too much cheese or anything else that could cause you stomach discomfort on the mountain, uh, do not drink the river water, and of course make sure that you've applied your sunscreen because today we have a very long, very grueling hike on Mount Illuminati. For those of you uh, uh, who are unaware, Illuminati is a very popular uh, YouTube channel. Uh, uh, approximately somewhere in the ballpark, uh, formerly in the ballpark of about 2 million subscribers, a, a very successful YouTube channel. Uh, and Illuminati has been making content uh, uh, for quite some time. And this month, in the last 30 days or so, there has been a basically never-ending drama uh, centered right around uh, the main face of the Illuminati channel, uh, a, a lady by the name of Blair. Now, uh, this drama actually started uh, with a claim from Blair against another very, very popular YouTube channel by the name of Legal Eagle. Um, however, that's not actually what we're going to be focusing on for the majority of this uh, long form drama deep dive. Um, in fact, we're going to be talking about a totally unrelated situation that sort of happened in the wake of the allegations by Illuminati against Legal Eagle. Now, just so that everybody's on the same page, I'm gonna summarize very quickly basically what happened in the Illuminati Legal Eagle situation. Illuminati uh, on Twitter uh, wrote up a post tagging a Legal Eagle and accusing their channel of plagiarism. Now, plagiarism is a very major allegation. It is especially a major allegation to make against a lawyer. And Legal Eagle, of course, is a YouTuber, but also a lawyer. Um, it's actually plagiarism is one of the uh, one of the types of criminal behavior that can get you permanently barred from being a lawyer. It's a very serious allegation. And the allegation that was made by Blair of Illuminati was that the Legal Eagle editing team had repeatedly approached, in Blair's words, had repeatedly approached uh, Illuminati's editing team and had ended up uh, copying uh, some special effects that were later used in videos. And this blew up pretty big, obviously, a huge YouTube channel accusing a lawyer and a, who is also an enormous YouTuber of plagiarism is a pretty big deal. So there were a lot of eyes on it. But when the uh, when it sort of came down to the time to provide evidence, the evidence that provide that was provided was, let's just say, very underwhelming. The evidence was that a uh, a special effects plugin that highlighted text was used both by Illuminati and by Legal Eagle, and also that uh, a sort of uh, what looked like a torn piece of notebook paper that had text sort of appear on it uh, was used both by Legal Eagle and by Illuminati. Now, of course, um, most people would immediately point out that uh, at least to the average person, that does not uh, scream of plagiarism because these are actually effects that you can generate using pre-created plugins. The like a tool to highlight text on a video with a highlighter, it can be downloaded for like 
a couple of bucks from a lot of video stores, like digital video effects stores. They they are pre-created effects. And the ones that were provided actually didn't even look similar. They weren't even the same plugin that was being used. So there was an immediate uh, sort of backlash to this allegation of plagiarism to the degree that some truly enormous names on YouTube ended up getting involved, including most notably a uh, video essayist by the name of H Bomber Guy, who is significantly larger than both Legal Eagle and Illuminati, who went very, very hard on Illuminati uh, and basically said, what are you fucking talking about? I have better examples of you doing plagiarism and then provided a clip of Illuminati uh, uh, delivering word for word uh, from a documentary without clearly citing it on the screen. Yeah, I can show you the actual tweet right here of this particular incident. Um, personally, Illuminati, this is H Bomber guy, I would define plagiarism as something a bit more specific. For example, copying someone else's do documentary directly into your script, um, which then this shows a clip from the documentary alongside a clip from Illuminati. Um, uh, sometime afterwards, Illuminati ended up issuing a public apology and a retraction of the claims of plagiarism. Um, however, uh, I believe it was like, and don't quote me hardcore on this again, this is not what we're focusing on. Uh, it was about seven to 10 days later that Illuminati ended up issuing a retraction on the claims of plagiarism. Now, um, that would have been enough, but, uh, it, amid this, uh, a, 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 another situation arose, and that is the drama that we are going to be focusing on today. Now, before I actually get into talking about the drama itself, I know I've just talked about the sort of precursor drama. There's going to be a bit of a... Uh, like I said, strap in. This is a hike, so be prepared and and be and get comfortable and ready because we got a lot to talk about. I need to talk about drama in general. I need to talk about why I'm even talking about drama. I have talked about drama on this channel a lot. Um, it's not my main content by any means, not even close. Um, however, there have been many times in the history of this channel when I have felt it necessary or valuable to weigh in on drama. In this particular incident, I took a very long time um, to decide whether or not I wanted to actually get involved. The allegations against Legal Eagle by Illuminati happened in late April, somewhere around April 18th or 19th. Um, so I've been sitting on it for quite some time. Um, and there's a couple of reasons why uh, I've made the decision to finally talk about this and go over it on my channel. Um, Drama is weird. If you talk about drama too much on your channel, uh, your your channel becomes dependent on drama. And I have never ever wanted to have a channel that's dependent on drama. And I don't have a channel that's dependent on drama. Um, however, some dramas have echoing repercussions in a space. Um, some dramas are, they, they cause such an upheaval uh, among content creators and the communities of those content creators um, that it can make a whole space more toxic, that it can actually severely impact the direction uh, that groups of creators and their audiences go in. And I think, unfortunately, that this is one of them. I, I think that this is one of those dramas uh, 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 that can have a that can have a pretty major impact and there's a number of reasons for this um the first being of course that uh illuminati's channel is centered around exposing abusive structures um I'll, i am a huge i have been a huge fan of illuminati's content for a very long time and i am going to with you know I'm going to attempt to withhold 
f a final conclusion on my opinions toward, until the end, until we've gone through all of the receipts. As you guys know, when I do drama content, which I usually call drama mamas, I'm all about looking at the actual receipts. I fucking hate misinformation on the internet and I hate context collapse. And unfortunately, uh, the removal of context is something that happens constantly on the internet and is sometimes unavoidable. Um, however, uh, uh, like I said, uh, not to get too, too rambly here. I know I'm already rambling a bit. It's, I'm sorry. It's a lot to deal with. Um, what I'm going to say is we're going to look at the evidence first and I'll give you all of my conclusions at the end. But I want to say I've been a fan of Illuminati's content for a long time because Illuminati tends to take on cults, uh, abusive businesses, and specifically multi-level marketing schemes. Multi-level marketing schemes are infamous in the United States. They're all over the place. Um, everything from stuff like Mary Kay to those like weird health drinks to uh, uh, bags, LuLaRoe bags. There's all kinds of mar multi-level marketing schemes that are set up in America and a lot of them are very abusive in my opinion. Not just like mildly abusive, they are built on horrific exploitation of people who don't know any better. Uh, they tend to target uh, people who are tight on money. They tend to target people who are going through life crises. Um, and in that way, a lot of multi-level marketing uh, schemes function a lot like cults. And Illuminati, a big chunk of Illuminati's most popular content has been exposing and taking down these types of structures. Additionally, Illuminati is a pretty vocal uh, left-leaning person. Uh, as many of you will know, I operate uh, in, a, in a space of leftist-leaning politics. I talk about politics a lot from a left-leaning perspective. I'm very open about that. It's, uh, I think it's you know very valuable and I make my arguments for that all the time. Um, and this space uh, is, has a weird network of connections, but nonetheless, uh, you know, there is a certain amount of, there's a certain set of beliefs and practices that people are expected to be held up to when you make your content specifically about uh, a, a type, a left-leaning politics. You know what I mean? Uh, people expect that you are not going to be engaging in abusive business practices, uh, that you are not going to be, um, you know, uh, uh, two-faced and hypocritical in your in your practices. There's just an expectation if you brand your content that way, people are going to hold you to that standard. And unfortunately, in this particular situation, basically all of the things that I've just mentioned have at one point or another come into contest. Regardless of where you fall, uh, as far as a conclusion to the drama, um, it is simply true that the that Illuminati's values as an individual and as a challenge as as a channel have come very strongly into question, and uh, it has uh, reflected poorly on a lot of the content that people really like from her channel. Um, a lot of the content calling out abusive practices, um, you know, manipulative businesses, uh, manipulative uh, cult-like uh, business structures these values have been called into question. Um, there's nearly three hours of direct source material. It's going to be a while. Yes, it is. I told you this is going to be a hike. Um, so that was the, that was sort of the, the, the understanding where this drama started, which we're not going to fixate on too much because it's honestly not as important. Um, and secondly, uh, I wanted to talk about why this drama is important to me enough that I'm actually going to take time of day, a decent amount of time out of my stream schedule to talk about it. And finally, I want to talk about drama in general real quick. Whenever there's drama on the internet, there is also hand in hand a lot of abuse. I don't know how to fix this problem right now. The internet as it exists currently has a lot of issues with abuse and harassment. Um, the internet is structured 
uh, uh, to inspire extremely weird parasocial attachments that are, uh, frankly, it's basically like every YouTuber that you uh, that you know um, has like some level of weird pa paparazzi. Uh, not literal paparazzi, but like paparazzi, internet paparazzi who try to follow them around, build narratives, post things about them randomly at all times. Even small content creators have an unbelievable amount of people who are weirdly fixated on them in really unhealthy ways. And it's basically YouTube and other platforms are designed to be this way in a way that makes it very hard to sift through all of the deranged shit even when there is some genuinely bad behavior going on or done by a content creator it can be really really hard to sift through that and especially on certain social media sites sometimes it actually seems like none of it matters at all like the truth actually doesn't matter that like uh, people just sort of decide however they feel about a content creator and then they run with that narrative and they associate with people who agree with that narrative and they disassociate with people who disagree with that narrative and that the actual truth doesn't matter. But I believe the truth does matter. I actually think that it's really, really important when shit like this happens that we do our absolute best to be thorough, to not... Uh, repeat things without evidence, to not go ham, to not spread misinformation, to not dogpile and harass and, and do deranged and unhealthy things. And I, the only way that I really, as like, a, as like an internet entertainer, I spend my time making y'all laugh and learn some things hopefully and occasionally help you all sift through complicated situations like this one. I think that something that I can do is ensure that at least for my part, uh, that whatever commentary I make is thorough and, uh, and, and based on what actually happened and based on the evidence that's actually provided instead of a never ending game of telephone via secondhand narratives. Does all of this make sense? I know that this is a little bit of a, of a, of a long windup um, but I'm just hoping that this is all making sense as to why I'm doing this windup. I don't know what accountability means on the internet anymore, or maybe ever. It's very difficult to know uh, what any of that means. But that doesn't mean that we can ignore everything that happens. It doesn't mean that when there is, uh, you know, influential people, uh, uh, you know, in 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 political spaces, in social spaces, and otherwise, that their stories can be completely ignored. And so, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I'm hoping that we can try and make some sense out of this, and that the people who watch my coverage of this will walk away feeling more informed and having more informed opinions than basically anybody else. That's my goal. My goal is to make sure that when you watch this stuff and you're getting caught up on a drama that everybody is talking about and everybody is saying things about, that you'll be able to look at these things and know whether or not something, a claim is true or not, or whether or not it's fair. And the reason why I think this is important is because, well, we have to do something, okay? We have to be able to do we are, we are very limited in our ability to positively uh, affect a lot of these spaces. It's very easy to negatively affect spaces. Anybody can log on the internet and, uh, and, and call somebody a shithead or send a slur at somebody. There's a lot of ways to negatively affect uh, uh, social spaces online, but it's difficult to do so positively. But I think that one of the ways that we can positively affect spaces is by A, knowing what happened when something major is alleged or when many major things are alleged and, and and like know what actually happened and B, know when people aren't telling the truth or when people are acting out of some kind of personal spite so that you can go, I'm not gonna jump on board with people doing this, okay? And here's the thing, as is going to become immediately apparent as we go through everything that's here, there have been a lot of very serious allegations made here. Um, I have been the target of 
extremely spurious and extremely serious allegations multiple times throughout the history of my career on this website. Some of you will know that my most, the biggest drama that I was recently personally involved in, believe it or not, it's been like six months since I've been involved in any drama. It's a miracle. The channel's been growing like crazy. By the way, if you are here and you're ready for this, press like and subscribe down below because I would love to have you as an imp. We are growing like crazy and I would love to have you counted among us. There's a reason why so many people are jumping on board and hearing the signal. But this particular drama has turned into people with very large platforms making very, very serious allegations. And I get really annoyed when people make allegations without evidence. And let me tell you, there is some pretty serious allegations going around in this particular situation, okay? So without any further ado, let's dive in to this drama, okay? So the first thing, I mentioned that Illuminati made some allegations against Legal Eagle, which turned out to be spurious and which she ultimately uh, rescinded. Illuminati no longer stands by her allegations of plagiarism. Um, which, okay, credit for taking them back. However, now that we've seen it, the allegation of, of plagiarism was an unbelievable stretch. It was not a good look for Illuminati. Uh, that was, I mean, again, Illuminati herself recanted the allegations and offered an apology to Legal Eagle. Um, and it, but, but again, that's a serious allegation, a really serious allegation. Plagiarism is a high crime in creative spaces. Friends. It's a career, it's a potentially career ending allegation. So it's very serious to fly off the handle with low evidence. That's what started it. However, shortly afterwards, a, another quite large YouTube content creator by the name of The Click, uh, wrote a thread about Illuminati, and this thread quickly picked up steam. Now, many many people would would will will point out, well, that seems pretty uh, opportunistic, doesn't it? That uh, Illuminati uh, Illuminati uh, basically got in hot water that she created hot water for herself. She made an allegation against Legal Eagle that she then later retracted because it was spurious. Um, pretty, f I think it's fair to say it was a spurious allegation. She should not have made the allegation in the first place. Um, and, uh, and the claims were not fairly uh, done. So is it, was it opportunistic of the click to put out this thread? I would argue to a certain degree, yes. But also, YouTube is an attention economy. Sometimes people are going to bring their grievances forward, even if they're unrelated, when somebody is trending. And if those uh, allegations stand on their own, or if they have any uh, 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 substance to them, they might take off. This is just something that happens. And I don't really know if you can uh, discredit anybody just because of that. I just wanted to get that out of the way because I've seen a lot of people saying, oh, this was super opportunistic. Well, I don't know. It is opportunistic to take advantage of, of spotlight being on somebody, but that's why we're here to look at the actual situation. So here is the YouTuber that we are going to be talking about. This is a channel known as The Click. They have made a thousand videos uh, they have 1.23 million subscribers. They are a quite large verified YouTube channel. Um, they've been going for a very, very, very long time. We're doing the click first, kind of. You, we're doing the clicks Twitter allegations first. They're a 10 year old channel. Yes, they are a 10 year old channel. And most importantly to what we're going to be talking about today, the click is a former collaborator and employee, it's kind of unclear exactly how the structure worked, but a former coworker at the very least with Illuminati. Now, all of the people that we are going to be talking about today, every single one of them 
is somebody who formerly worked with and collaborated with Illuminati. And I think that that's important to keep in mind as to the level of connection that these people have, okay? Fortnite says it's kind of like claiming that the the alleged rape victims of Donald Trump coming out during the election means that you shouldn't believe them because it's opportunistic. Yes, it's just the way that it works when you're talking about people who have large platforms. Anyway, let's take a look at what the click wrote on Twitter on April 23. So again, this is just a few days after the drama. Okay, here we go. Hey, peeps, I've seen the recent drama regarding Illuminati. This is, of course, referring to the spurious allegations against Legal Eagle from Illuminati. I would like to clarify I am not affiliated with her and haven't been for over two years. So two years ago, they used to work together. I left her and her collaboration group, which was called Sad Milk, due to similar behavior as seen in recent events. Lashing out at friends and fans, paranoia, and generally poor anger management, to name a few. Eventually, I believe pretty much the whole group ended up leaving her. The last meeting I ever had with her, she spent half an hour, I think hard to remember exactly, screaming at me for an array of random things. She called me a bad friend, lazy, and a bunch of random accusations that didn't really have anything to do with me. There is, quote, there is no way you can have the resume you claim and be this fucking stupid, and so on. No one ever even raised her, their voice back at her. Now, so far, sorry, so far, what we have is uh, uh, a situation of interpersonal verbal abuse. Somebody being very harsh and cruel to another individual. That, in and of itself is not much for us to operate with. Uh, so I don't have much to say about that, but let's continue. I left along with several other members, half the group at the time. She spent the next few months spreading lies and half-truths about us on the Sad Milk Reddit page and vague posts on Twitter. I have all the screenshots. Now, personally, if I think that it would have been good to Im include the screenshots here. This is a pretty major allegation, okay? Spreading lies and half-truths about us on the Sad Milk Reddit page and vague posts on Twitter. I still have all the screenshots. Now, let me, t let me say something real quick. I want to commentate on this real quick. YouTube is a reputation game in a lot of ways, especially in certain types of content creation. Now, uh, some content creators can get by doing largely solo content. However, it is simply true that your channel will grow easier if you have a good reputation and if people are willing to recommend you. As many of you guys know from watching my channel, a lot of my longtime fans will know that uh, the first, like, the, like, like the first, after the first six months of my channel or so, six to eight months of my channel, there was a solid year and a half where a number of very large creators were spending an exorbitant amount of time destroying my reputation falsely online. And it made it very difficult for me to grow my channel because other content creators wouldn't collaborate with me. They wouldn't send their followers over to me. They wouldn't react to my videos. Um, and now, finally, a very long time later, I have sort of been History has proven that the things that were said about me were fucking bullshit, okay? But the fact of the matter is that YouTube is in a lot of ways a reputation game. If you get your reputation damaged, especially if you get it damaged really badly, it can severely damage your career. It can completely destroy your career. Um, and it's really, really hard to recover if your reputation is damaged. Whether that reputation damage is true or false, it's very difficult to bounce back from that. So uh, what he's alleging here is pretty serious. The click is basically saying that from the official fan page of their collaboration group, uh, uh, Blair used that as a platform to damage the reputation and potentially lose, fa like take fans away from former collaborators. Now, that's a pretty serious thing to do, okay? Um, it is very normal for collaborations to end. It is very normal for collaborations to not work out. YouTube is a pretty uh, bumpy 
uh, career path. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of unknowns, a lot of things can happen, people can have changes in their lives, some people just change the direction of their channel. It's normal for collaborations to stop. What's not normal is for collaborations to end in a way that results in uh, like one or two of the members to completely start losing their following. So this is a pretty major allegation. It's a pretty major allegation, but also it comes with pretty major consequences if it's true. She would turn friends against you or specifically team up with people she knew didn't like you so that she had allies against you, rallying mainly ba banned problematic community members known to be liars and conflict uh, seekers. Now, this is also a wild allegation. This is a hard allegation to prove, and yet we will find out, of course, if the evidence actually exists for this. But um, if you have a tight-knit community for a collaboration project, um, if there's like, like for example, if uh, a big falling out between creators that, that that work together all the time can be really bad. As an example, imagine if Hassan and H3H3 went separate ways. Hassan and H3H, they are both gigantic channels with an incredible amount of overlap because they do a podcast together. If they fell, if they fell apart and one of them was basically talking to an enormous amount of the of the community and saying this person's a piece of shit this person's a piece of shit that could completely siphon fans away and it it could actually gain a lot for one of people and hurt the other one quite a lot it would be huge okay like this is a pretty serious thing that can happen in collaborative projects and also like i said why most people try to end collaborative projects on good terms yeah, I don't, okay, Retcon brings up Game Grumps. I don't know how Game Grumps survived. Um, well, they took some pretty major damage, like they all did. Like Game Grumps lost a lot of a lot of fans in, in the short term. And and uh, JonTron, of course, uh, ended up losing a lot of fans because of his own thing. But even in that case, they didn't, even when it was theorized that John and Aaron had pretty major differences, they didn't split on like bad terms, at least not publicly. They kept it pretty chill. And then John Tron ended up sort of destroying his own career independently. And even still, even parting on relatively peaceful terms, um, at least publicly, uh, 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 it w you know, it still did damage the channel. These things are pretty major. Yeah. All right, let's continue. Let's continue. When people started questioning that maybe she was the reason that everyone left the t the part that the project, this is Sad Milk is the name of the project. There was a very convenient digging up of four, of 11 to 14 year old videos of me. Stuff that I made back when I started my channel in 2009 when I was a teenager. And as you can probably guess, some of the jokes from that time age like milk. I publicly owned up to my past mistakes and apologized, doing my best to be transparent and honest about my past. Fairly straightforward. Thank you, Chromium Bookmarks. Chromium Bookmarks says, Demon Mama, I love your hair today. Thank you so much. I also am feeling very good about my hair today. Thank you. Um... Again, this is a content creator who's been making content for over 10 years. His current channel is 10 years old. We are going to find out all the details about this. Uh, you don't need to make... Uh, Nut says, you don't need to say sorry for YouTube videos you made when you're 12. I don't care. Um, look, I tend to be pretty forgiving uh, to content that people make when they're literal kids, okay? Uh, no, no child is ready to be exposed to the internet. Okay, and uh, if if when I was when I was like fifteen, I was still in a cult. Like when you're a kid, you don't have a whole lot of say over what you do, and if you put stuff on the internet because you're trying to have a good time, a good time, you're probably gonna say some pretty stupid stuff. I generally don't care what people said in the past when they were kids. I mean. Unless it's like they did a literal, like, I don't know, even unless they like killed somebody or something like that, obviously, but 
anyway i don't want to spend a lot of time on that i think it's a pretty dirty move to bring up content that's like over a decade and a half old Illuminati would still harp on it, ignoring the fact that it had already been addressed, trying to direct as much attention to, my, to, to those videos as possible, publicly stating it was a bad apology along with vague posting about it in the comments on the collaboration channel. Now, this to me seems like a pretty shitty thing to do. Um, regardless of how much of a falling out you have with your collaborators, using the official account of the collaboration project that people left to like shit talk them in the comments seems like a pretty dirty move generally. Um, I mean, I think there are some exceptions, at least on a personal level. Um, I, I think there are some exceptions to that rule. Um, you know, like if somebody like, if you had a collaboration channel and then like your collaborator tried to kill you or something, I think it makes sense that you would probably want to tell that story. But um, so far, uh, we don't have Blair's side of the story yet, but we will. Um, on the surface though, this seems like a pretty major thing uh, uh, or a pretty shitty thing to do to someone that you split that you split on because of creative differences. What we have so far is basically that there were creative differences on the team. That's what the click has basically said. He said, we decided to go different ways because she yelled a lot and didn't like what we were doing with the content. And uh, and so, you know, it, it's pretty shitty to do that in my opinion, generally. But we don't have hard evidence yet. Maybe in an attempt to get people to assume I had been kicked out for poor behavior rather than leave because of her own behavior. Blair, assuming Illuminati, assuming it was her as she had, she was the one who had channel access, also liked to pull what I could only describe as very petty acts of revenge. For example, some people left comments on the collaboration channel saying it's good that Click left. They obviously got ratioed hard as people were there for the individual creators. She would manually go in and delete ratioing of comments, but leave original hate comments. Also a very petty thing to do. Um, generally poor form, uh, if this is true, a uh, general poor form of, of uh, to, to like delete positive comments about former collaborators and leave only negative comments comments that is like some some 1984 manipulation crap okay but again keep in mind this is just the clicks you know sort of personal uh explanation of what happened this is not like there's not been any hard evidence provided or anything like that so far anyway um she tried to gain control of my discord when it surpassed hers in size also a huge allegation by tossing around accusations at staff and trying to get rid of my team and replacing it with hers giving me an ultimatum to fire my entire senior team or be publicly fired from sad milk myself again sad milk is the collaboration channel so keep that in mind this is going to be a term that comes up a lot I was still a YouTube freshie at the time, and she was quite intimidating, claiming that she had connections and clout, reputation and powerful friends. So everyone stayed mostly silent and had to constantly look over our shoulders for the next year. None of us were even mentioning the whole thing. We were even worried talking in our own discords as it became apparent that she had spies within our moderation ranks. Yikes. Yikes. That's spooky. We were just hoping we wouldn't have our reputation completely destroyed for simply walking away. This is just a brief summary of events. It's sad to see that she hasn't changed. Now, this account, you might notice, is very low on receipts. However, so far, this is more or less um, just a claim that, uh, that she was unfair to the team, that she was rude to them. Uh, there are a few allegations that I think um, truly warrant receipts, but most of the allegations here are basically, uh, I think that Blair is unprofessional and treated me like hell. Um, while I think that it would have been better to provide 
allegation, like actual images for certain things, like here, for example, where he says, I have screenshots of her using the official account to spread lies. This would have been a good spot for receipts. Like it would have been a really good spot for receipts. However, most of this is simply saying, I feel like this person that I used to work with is pretty bad. So we don't have a whole lot to go off of here. This is pretty clearly just one person stating their personal experience. And to be fair, while these, while these tweets did pretty well, they didn't exactly go like super viral. Again, the click has 1.23 million and there's and you know there's like 8000 likes on the first tweet and it declines pretty quickly after that so this brings us to uh this brings us to the uh <sighs> to a much larger set of allegations okay hold on a second let me bring these up the first thread that we're talking about happened on April 23rd and then Another former Sat Milk collaborator wrote another thread, quote tweeting and building off of the thread that the click created. Introduce Wonderstruck Guy, aka Wonder. Wonder was another major contributor to uh to the Sad Milk project and and wrote a relatively long and pretty major thread here. Okay? And we're gonna go into this real quick now this was made the same day as the thread by the click forgive me for being this scattered emotions and all gotta love them a sad milk thread after being threatened with a breach for spree for speaking out i can confirm that the behavior blair exhibits is entirely accurate here referring to the thread that we just read from the click i am aware of the bridges i burned and i remain where i am after Sad Milk split, it was a constant negative echo chamber that I took part in. Regardless, I used to edit for Sad Milk. Blair made no effort to take direction. Uh, she, she made everything about herself. Sad Milk, at the time, was the nearest thing I had to family, which sounds pathetic, but the content creator space is a very isolating one. It is true, con content creation, content creation, video making on YouTube, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is a, it is a very isolating experience. It can be very difficult. Um, everything is done digitally. You, you don't do a whole lot of things in person. So having an opportunity to work with real people is a pretty major deal. Also, as we are going to find out, not to, not to spoiler anything, but uh, Wonder was 19 years old Wonder was 19 years old when he started working on the Sad Milk project, which is a very young age to begin getting involved in a major YouTube project. He was very, very young, okay? The amount of hours I would spend online making drafts, editor tutorials for new hires, staying up to try to get some editing in if editors were shorthanded. I missed Christmas with my brother and father fixing the mistake of the editor she hired, and I didn't even get a thank you, and it took me more than, a ha more than half a month to get paid. Meanwhile, she delays payments to editors so she can purchase expensive clothes, visit BMW dealerships, and spend hundreds on food in a day. Now, so far, Again, much like the click thread, these seem like sort of character judgments. I think this person is irresponsible, and I think she treated me poorly when I was working in this project. While I do hold my beliefs towards certain matters, I don't know what that means, every month or so there was a new villain of the week. They would one second be a normal person in our lives, and the next second suddenly a hidden monster through, you guessed it, Blair's mouth. So now what he's saying is that Blair would sort of attempt to direct who was the good guy and the bad guy of the month. To say Sad Milk split on creative differences is a joke. It's a flat out lie. Again, I'm aware of the bridges burned, but I can confirm that a call took place where she screamed, cursed, and had a meltdown towards not the click and one topic at a time. It was a train wreck. So previous allegations from the click and this uh and this creator one topic at a time uh are being verified by a third member of the group now if i remember correctly the primary members of sad milk were five 
uh, The Click, Wonder, Blair, uh, Oz Media, who we will learn about soon, and OT, AKA One Topic at a Time. Three of the members so far, actually four, have actually ended up basically verifying one another's stories with regards to this, which is, and this right here is pretty important because Wonder is, was one of the people who remained on after the creative differences and is verifying that what the click said happened. So that in and of itself is a, is a word of mouth, but nonetheless, a important thing to keep note of. It was supposed to be a fun group project and we had become profitable, even if just to a small extent. Blair wanted to be a creative lead and we went from doing fun creative topics more, uh, more in line with the Reddit, uh, uh, more in line with the Reddit we would all cover on our own channels to doing unenthusiastic view content. Blair took control and wouldn't listen to how the, the videos should be made, and so we got hyper loud music with childlike sprites paired with adult humor, which just made being a part of Sad Milk humiliating. My friends and I, oops, my friends and I would watch Sad Milk and laugh, but not at the content, but at, rather at how awful it had become. Not due to anyone not being entertaining, but the lack of quality control. It was an editorial nightmare. It's why I in part stopped editing because my really well-made content got roped into that by proxy. Blair did not care. It was hers and anyone who dared try to take the reins was a threat. After Click, OT, and Salty left. Oh, Salty is a character. Oh, sorry, there were six members. I forgot Salty who does not come up in this very much. I don't know that we've heard from Salty yet. I could ver at least I haven't seen anything from Salty. Uh, left, I did almost all of the heavy lifting, which is a thankless job for being small on the internet and also being very young. Just remember that. I tried making us schedules. I motivated Blair during another mental breakdown of hers to not delete the channel or the Discord since I actively read through the comments on both and we had people who we mattered to. Now, that's a pretty major allegation to make and also a pretty serious thing. If you have a collaboration project and one of the members who has taken directorial control threatens to delete the channel, a channel that is making you your income, that's a pretty major issue. Now, I don't know, um, I don't know if we will ever get any evidence of this actually happening. Um, so far, all we have here is uh is 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 the claims is the claims uh is an anecdotal claim basically saying this was my experience with this project and why i left what we are getting here is simply i don't think i don't think this person is responsible and while i was there uh the channel was threatened to be deleted it's like threatening to say i'm going to delete the company we all work for yeah it is it's a pretty major thing now, um, that's a pretty scary thing to deal with. I think that would be scary regardless of how involved you were uh, with the team, but especially if you were a co-collaborator, especially if you were a co-collaborator who had just stayed with the channel after a number of members left. After months of behind the scenes insults towards Click and OT, it became so stale and negative. Yeah, we all took part, but after it going on so long, it just became day after day, Blair would sit and check Click and OT's social blade. She would make fake accounts to stalk them. Now keep in mind, Wonder, Wonder is not Click and OT. Wonder and Click and OT have no current associations. Wonder is basically saying, seconding the thread that Click made and claiming that he witnessed uh, this happening. So this grants some credence to the Click story, if only via somebody saying, I saw this happening. But as far as we can tell, and as far as we know, as far as anybody can tell, there's no real motivation or, or gain as to why Wonder would not tell the truth about this particular aspect. Not just them, but a large portion of the commentary community. I've personally seen her try to get her lawyer to shut down anyone who says anything against her, and they ruined her day by saying, yeah, we can't really do anything. It's insane. 
It's insane. Innocent people don't work so hard to try and silence others. We would get no work done. I can't count how many times I pleaded and set up meeting for us to do something and nobody cared. I thought I had a friend who was hurting. Then I saw that I had moved to villain. And like everyone else, I got shut out, trash talked, and the people I had made efforts to be friend with wouldn't even acknowledge my existence. For me though, I had already moved states under good faith that I was bettering my life. In 30 days of living with Blair, it was a nightmare. Now this is where it gets weird. In 30 days of living with Blair, it was a nightmare. Now when I originally saw this, that was the biggest red flag that I saw right away, which was, wait a second, they were, they were living together. I'm gonna take a second here and say, there's a lot of messiness in YouTube, in the YouTube world, okay? There is not a lot of professionalism in the YouTube world. However, streamers and YouTubers are somewhat infamous for getting themselves involved in particularly difficult situations. Um, many people will know one of the dramas that we covered in the past was uh, the Sky House situation, which was a uh, mostly Blizzard game streamers uh, all lived together under one millionaire's house and uh, he had like 25 people living in like a two bedroom apartment. They were all like sleeping on top of each other and a bunch of really bad shit happened under uh, inside the house. It was a horrible nightmare situation. There's just been a, and I mean, we all, we've all seen, many of us have seen the OTK drama uh, or no, no, yeah, OT, not OTK, not OTK. Yeah, there was OTK drama too, but there was the offline TV was another one where there was a uh, company sponsored house where content creators were living together and it got really bad. Um, that's not to say that content creators can't live together ever. It's just to, to say it's a red flag. It's not always a bad thing, but living, living with your employer uh, can't has a lot of opportunities to go wrong, okay? Uh, and people, some depending on the on the the structure, there's lots of reasons why people uh, make these decisions, and there's also lots of structures with it. There are uh, there are much more even ways than others. Like for example, if two YouTubers decide to rent an apartment together, that's one thing, versus. Uh, you signing on to a existing content creator who wants you to be a part of his YouTube house, where as a part of your contract, you live there and make content 24 hours a day. You see how there's a pretty big difference between like two content creators just getting a, a place together. But again, it's a red flag. It's a red flag. In 30 days of living with Blair, it was a nightmare. I felt like I was trapped in her home always. She makes everyone her enemy. She called one she she called wonder checking in to see if I'm okay, an invasion of privacy. I sent her numerous messages trying to show her I wanted to be her friend. She lives like an actual monster. Her home is a mess, like hoarder's bad. Constant subtweets about me on Twitter and ignoring me. And if I dare say anything back, her Discord manager would happily remind me of my contract. This was the second red flag for me in this story. Okay? This was the second red flag. A contract, a contract signed that appears to have some sort of NDA or non-disparagement clause. This is disgusting. And this was the picture that was depicted. As you can see, there's like a lot of clothes everywhere. It's very messy. There's a lot of trash on the floor. Now, I want to point something out, which is that at this point, there was no evidence that this was a real photo. We had no reason to assume that this was an, a, a real photo. And I do think that that's a big mistake on Wonder's part. Now I'll say, not to spoil, but we do later find out, specific, we actually find out from Illuminati herself that this is a real photo, and also that mul multiple other photos exist, which have now been uh, cross-verified by multiple sources. So 
while we didn't know at the time of this thread being published, which is a mistake in my opinion on Wonder's part, not actually providing any evidence that this is real or cross collaboration, we now know from Blair herself, this is a real photo, as are a number of other photos that I'm going to be completely honest, do look like nightmare house situations. The other photos included, including the testimony of someone who lived with her the longest, the person who actually owned the house that they were all living in, um, will, will, will confirm later that the living conditions were actually very bad. So we know now that Wonder was not lying about this particular um, thing. My therapist, who she accuses me of stealing because she recommended that therapist, suggests I leave this house, that house, at all costs, and I did. The details I can't get into further due to legalities, but I ended up with no car, hardly any clothes and money to my name, and no home. Now I'm working full time again. I had no time for my channel, and I had cried, bled, and worked through hell to get up to get it up. So I watched it die since my main concern now was just food on my table, all because I made friends with one of the most vile people on the platform. Nobody wanted to talk with me and I was too afraid to fully go public because I didn't know the reach that this massive creator had. I had everything IRL and online taken from me. She personally threw my YouTube play button in the trash. If that isn't symbolic, man, I don't know what is. Now that is a massive allegation. And unfortunately, as far as we can tell, as we will see as we go on, even though no evidence was provided in the moment, it does appear that this is actually true. And we'll get to that point, and I'll point it out. But, uh, but again, at this point, this was just uh, a claim from Wonder sort of offhand. I've spent the last two years of my life rebuilding from the ground up due to this woman, Illuminati. The only difference is that I get to come back stronger as a person, she doesn't. She can't take that away from everyone that she has screwed over. Blair, you can't hide anymore. Sooner or later, you are going to push everyone who cared about you away and you'd realize the world isn't out to get you. But you made your fears a reality all on your own. I'm not afraid of you. You don't get that from me anymore, never again. I apologize for how long this thread is. I understand this place probably isn't the best place to do it, but I'm so sick of knowing all this information and never being able to say anything. Have a good day. Be well, everyone. Okay. So most of this thread is fairly interpersonal allegations allegations that she was an unstable person to work with, allegations that she was cruel, that she was harsh, that she yelled at people, that, that creative differences was a poor excuse. And also, I will note though, this is a second voice who was involved in the project who is uh, attesting that they witnessed the behaviors that the click was talking about. Oh, I have all of those videos set up. Don't worry. Now, there are problems with this thread. Um, there is not a lot of hard evidence provided in this thread. Um, and at the time, uh, it was very vulnerable to basically just becoming rumor fodder because of that lack of evidence. However, I also don't think that uh, a content creator telling their personal experience with, with a, another content creator is in and of itself a bad thing. However, because of the way that platforms operate, because of the fact that everyone has audiences, um, it's important to be very thorough with these things. Otherwise, they can get spread and they can become a bigger problem uh, uh, immediately. You know, they can become a bigger problem very quickly. It can spiral into a cancellation or a dogpile or harassment. Now, something I think is important to consider here is that Wonder has 9,282 Twitter followers, okay? Wonder is not a large account and does not have the largest platform, okay? On YouTube, uh, Wonder has 7.9 thousand subscribers. 
Now, I don't know if this was the original channel. I don't know if, uh, I think they have another channel, but that means they're a really, really small creator. Like, a tiny creator. And they're making, you know, sort of very personal, experiential allegations here. And they're also not calling for anything bad to happen to Blair. They are simply saying, I had a bad time with Blair and Blair hurt me and here's how I feel about it. What we are about to see, however, is that Blair chose to react to this. Now, this is a complicated part, okay? We're gonna watch Blair's reaction and we're gonna go through it. Um, I do think that when people have allegations slung against them, that they have a, a general right to respond. Um, I have had many things slung against me, sometimes by content creators who are smaller than me, sometimes by content creators that are larger. I do think that people have a general chance to respond. However, I think there's room to critique how people respond to things. And I think that uh, generally the response should be proportional to the initial act. Wonderstruck guy was his original, I believe. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, Wonderstruck guy. This was his original channel. Yeah, this is the original channel and the channel that we'll will go from there, uh, which is one thousand and twelve, one hundred and twelve thousand. Sorry, excuse me, one hundred and twelve thousand subscribers. Still, uh, uh, Illuminati, uh, somewhere in the ballpark of one point five to one point six million, almost two million subs. Uh, Wonderstruck Guy, 100K. Um, and no, nowhere near the amount of, of Twitter clout. Now, in my opinion, most of the allegations that were made here are, they're not nice. They're, they don't reflect well on, uh, on Illuminati. But with... I don't believe that any of these allegations that we have read here are what I would call career enders. Um, keep in mind that, like I said, the, the, the drama that started this was Blair making an allegation of plagiarism, which is a huge allegation. Now, while these threads could uh, are, certainly seem to be, you know, uh, very harsh towards Blair, could certainly do some reputational damage, Neither, uh, uh, the, the uh, uh, Wonder does not have the reach to just with his personal story do reputational damage to Illuminati. The Click does, but the Click also mostly kept it a conversation about why the falling out happened. And also keep in mind that the Click's allegations of Illuminati basically obsessively trying to damage his reputation has now been verified by another member of the group. And of course, as this goes on, we will find out that it is verified by a third, perhaps the, the most important member of the group, the person who was most involved with Blair, which is Oz Media. We will see that in a little bit. We'll get there. Um. So it's, it's very, very, uh, it's a complicated situation to sort, but most of the allegations here are largely interpersonal, um, with the exception of the click saying, hey, you damaged my reputation by going around and saying horrible things about me at, you, from our collaboration platform, which that's a pretty bad and serious thing to do. So we're going to have to find out whether or not where we're at right now in our long hike up Drama Mountain is we have to find out whether or not there is evidence that the clicks, uh, that the click was, that, that, that she actually did that. Because if she did do that, if Illuminati did use the official platform of Sad Milk to uh, disparage members after they'd left the group, especially if those members of the group were bound by an NDA and that they supposedly broke up because of creative differences, that's really bad. That could be career damaging. And so I think it's very important that the click provides evidence here. However, before we can find out anything further that the click says, Blair responded to all of this drama. So we have to watch Blair's response 
to this drama. We've done a lot of reading so far, but you'll ha be happy to know that we are now going to get to hey, the everyone. audio visual portion of this Drama hey. Mama giant special, okay? So I hope that you are all strapped in and ready to go because we are about to listen to Illuminati's response to these allegations. Now again, these allegations that were made so far are don't look good for Illuminati, but for the most part, with a few exceptions, basically are experiential. It's somebody saying, I had a bad experience with you. I think you're uh, 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 you know, bad and, and not good and terrible and all of this. Um, none of these allegations rise to the level of career enders or anything really into legal action with the exception of maybe saying, you know, the throwing away the play, play button, that's pretty bad. You could probably make a small claims thing for that. Are we going to be watching the Click and Wonderstruck guys videos on the stuff? Oh yes, we absolutely are. Now this is where it's going to get very intense, okay? And I need to warn you in advance, it is right here in the drama with Illuminati's response that this drama goes off the deep end. It is right here that we start to deal with some very, very intense stuff. In this video, we are going to have allegations of uh, pedophilia and pedophilia defense. We are going to have allegations. Uh, we are going to have references to abuse, uh, uh, severe abuse. We are going to have references to suicide. Uh, and I believe that's everything for this video. So just keep in mind, it's about to get very, very intense. And I think this is this this response here is where it really started to get uh, uh, a lot of attention. And uh, again, the click has a pretty large platform, but that thread was not the the be all end all. And the click didn't do a video about this. Wonder at the time. The Click has since done a video, which we will watch, um, and so has Wonder. But at the time, they were just Twitter threads from fairly small, by comparison, Twitter accounts. Okay? Dust Aeon says, God, I love whenever Demon Mama covers drama like this. It's so in-depth, and I'm all here for it. You're welcome. That's what Drama Mama is all about. Drama Mama is about getting you in the loop with the information so that you can actually think about these situations and come to a conclusion for yourself. If you're loving this, by the way, take this opportunity to please press the like button and please make sure that you are subscribed to Demon Mama. Uh, I don't do a whole ton of drama content, but when I do it, I do it really thoroughly. And I know that if you are watching this and liking this, you're gonna love my other content because I put just as much love and energy into my other content as I do here. All right, let's do this. Now, Illuminati's video, okay? This is the video of, made by the official Illuminati channel, which is currently at 1.55 million subscribers. This video alone has almost a million views. It was published five days after the threads were, were published. So keep in mind, this entire, the original thread has 297 impressions on Twitter, which doesn't really mean very much. 297,000 impressions on Twitter is a lot. Don't get me wrong, but Twitter impressions are not the same thing. What this means is that the biggest platform for this entire conversation so far has been commanded by Illuminati. So just keep that in mind as we're watching this. Let's go. Hey everyone, well, there's no really fun or interesting way to start this conversation. So um, you guys know what you're here for, and I'm just going to jump into it the way I know how to. So I'm sure as all of you know, uh, many things have been said about me in the past week, like week and a half-ish. And I'm someone who often doesn't speak my side of things, and that's something that's also mm. been noted. Just for kind of full transparency in this, I'm going to be working from some of like my notes that I've written to accomplish two main things. The first is mainly to keep me on track with the subject matter and off of tangents. I know I like to go off on tangents and talk about various topics all the time, but this is not that time. The second reason is really just to keep my emotions in check. Um, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in the, like, most of this video, to be totally honest with you, are things kind of from the past. They involve old friends, um, people that I used to consider close friends and I used to trust and really enjoy spending time with. 
and kind of reopening a lot of these wounds is really painful. Um, it's really uncomfortable and it's not something I ever thought I would ever have to speak about, especially not in this kind of way. After a few days of self-reflection and really thinking about what I want to say and how I want to talk about these things, I think now is the right time. To be perfectly honest, um, I'm feeling pretty vulnerable to have this conversation with so many people and so publicly, especially since some of the things that I'm gonna talk about today are really personal and things in my private life that should have never become content fodder. So let me try something new today and I'm going to address these issues. Now, before we get into debunking many false statements that have been made about me, I want to start with an apology. I have apologized privately to Legal Eagle the day after this incident occurred, though I have not been publicizing that until right now. Maybe this is something I should have said sooner, but I needed the time to think through the events that have proceeded. And for those unaware, a short story. My editors came to me about how parts of a Legal Eagle video looked similar to our videos. And then there were messages and an email from one of Legal Eagle's editors asking for more information about how we do certain effects. I looked at the compared images that were brought to me and I said, wow, that does look pretty similar. And I impulsively posted about it. Okay. Now, this was my first problem with this video. Um, and I still have a problem with this response. Impulsively accusing another large YouTube creator of plagiarism on a public social media platform that you have that's very large is a really, really, really bad decision. And now it's almost like she's trying to pin it on the editors, that the editors came forward and were like, hey, look at this stuff. But keep in mind that the evidence provided was an email from one of Legal Eagle's editors asking another editor, hey, what, what type of Adobe After Effects plugins, which keep in mind are not original, plugins are used by thousands of people. They're a pre-made tool that you're supposed to be able to use to achieve a certain effect. Notice that just like before she pushed the responsibility onto her editor. Well, that's what we're, we're going to have to see that because we haven't seen all of that yet. Oh, in the original post, you're saying, yes, she did do that in the original post. She has kind of pushed responsibility on this to the editor, despite the fact that she used her personal account to levy this allegation. So there's this weird thing going on right now in this video that's like an, a non-apology apology. It's like, well, I'm sorry that I got blown out for this frivolous claim, but, you know, it was my editors. I was really trying to stand up for my editors. And I think that's... I don't respect that. I think you should just say, I jumped the gun and I blew it on this one. I'm really sorry, Legal Eagle. That was way out of line for me to, achieve, to accuse you of that. That would be what I would consider to be an honorable apology in this particular situation. Now, this is just me as a viewer who is, who is aware of this drama saying, I think it's bad to pin it on your editors when you were the one who jumped the gun and made a potentially career ending allegation. And again, plagiarism won't just end your career on YouTube. It can end your career as a lawyer. That is a severe, severe allegation. Yes, people are pointing out in chat that this was very clearly, look, you can actually read the email. She put the email up on the, on the screen. Here we go. Here's the, here it is on the screen. Hey Blair, I work as an editor for Legal Eagle and I was wondering if there was an After Effects plugin you guys use for things like the first, the intro to the first NFL video where the lighter colors appear to stick out in 3D. We could probably recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method that you guys were using. Here's the video I'm talking about so you know what I mean. Now, this is an important detail even though I said we weren't gonna focus too much on this drama, we're not. This email that she's showing on the screen is not even about the same After Effects plugin that she later accused the editors of plagiarizing. She accused them of plagiarizing a highlighter effect and plagiarizing a torn piece of paper effect. This is for an NFL color pop effect. So this 
this allegation is just so frivolous. It's so, so unbelievably spurious. I can't assert it is so she was so in the wrong to make an allegation of plagiarism against legal eagle and this evidence does not back up her case in fact it further shows that she needs to apologize way more profusely in my opinion and this is clearly just a request for a friendly request for advice now keep in mind, oh, do we, I wish we had the original. I think she deleted the original thread, but in the original thread, she, she framed this as a threat. In the original thread, she said they threatened here when they say we could recreate it, but we figured there was probably a faster method you guys were using. She framed that as a threat from Legal Eagle's team that they were going to do it regardless, which is beyond dishonest, just beyond dishonest. Doe says, my face when I find out the guy sitting next to me is also using a Dixon Ticonderoga number two pencil. Ah! True! Fucking true! Oh my god. It is a, again, this is a very spurious claim. Anyway, let's continue. There's asking for more information about how we do certain effects. I looked at the compared images that were brought to me and I said, wow, that does look pretty similar. And I impulsively posted about it on Twitter. Truthfully, I should have looked into this more instead of just putting the information out there the oh, second yes, I had a gut reaction really should about have. it. I should have asked him what the emails were about, but I didn't. And I made a mistake and plain and simple, I was wrong. No, so you didn't just make a mistake. This is a thing. Sorry, I need to correct this right away. Now, of course, this is deleted on Twitter. All this has been deleted, but actually, does anybody, does, I was not able to get an archive of these original tweets. Does anybody have the, the actual archive? If anybody in my chat has the archive of the thread, this is one of the problems with Twitter is people delete shit all the time. If anyone has the archive of the original thread, I would love to show you because she didn't just, um, she didn't just sort of, uh, uh, make a mistake. She also alleged that in that email that they were basically threatening to take the stuff anyway. If anybody has the ac the internet archive link to that, if you want one, people have done commentary about it. If anybody can find it, I would love to show the original thread just so I can I can show you that I'm I'm not uh, misremembering the original allegations. Eagle and and team, I just want to reiterate that I messed up and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you and of course to your team. I know I apologized privately and removed the tweets with that apology, and I'm now publicly sharing that information with all of you. And I want to extend that apology to- Oh, thank you. Oh, we got the little Joel one? I would love to use the little Joel one if we got that. Hold on, let me bring that up. Hey everybody, so little Joel isn't a drama channel. I've never really engaged with- Not legal eagle editors broaching my editors to take my video style and when they didn't give up the info They literally copied it and by the way I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. just change the color from purple to blue, huh? interesting I went through my emails and I found this just outright saying yeah, I'm gonna do this But if you could make it easier for me, I'd appreciate it do you see what I'm saying here? Here's the actual screenshots. Of course, these are deleted now. So here's the first one. Broaching, broaching my editors to take my video's style. No, that's not what they did at all. And when they didn't give it up, they literally copied it. No, they didn't. That's false as well. Do you see what I'm saying? Do you, do you see what I'm saying about this video already having issues and misrepresenting that makes this, that makes this, apology come out come off very very hollow she's apologizing for for she's apologizing while misrepresenting what actually happened but let's continue my audience and to listeners who are disappointed in me for this because i'm also disappointed in myself it was a quick drawn decision and it wasn't thought out i promised to do better now, as we continue in this video, I do want to give you a heads up that there will be trigger warnings for various sections as needed. I also want to go ahead and let you know that I will be providing a public Google Drive containing any and all relevant information that I will address in this video, similar to how I provide a source document for every episode of mine. Let's start with the first accusation and go from there. 
After Legal Eagle responded in his tweets, there was another tweet that arose in tandem to this situation. And that tweet was made by another YouTuber called HBomberGuy. And this YouTuber is someone who also creates longer form content. As someone who creates this type of content and researches various topics, the main thing to keep in mind is the source material used. Things like articles, H Bomber Guy says, just to clarify, one of Legal Eagle's editors asked one of your editors what plugin they used for a personal video they were working on for their own channel. I take plagiarism really seriously, so I'm interested in an explanation exactly what is wrong here. Well, th the answer is, of course, nothing. There was nothing wrong. That editor did absolutely nothing wrong in sending a polite email going, hey, I'm working on a personal video. I would like some advice. You found the full thread? There we go. Here we have it. Just so, just in case anyone worries that those were uh, faked, this is an internet archive link right here. Not Legal Eagles editors broaching. Uh, there's the quote that exactly word for word from, from the one that we showed from uh, Little Joel's one. Thank you very much, Heavy Gretel. I really appreciate that. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot about this part too. Further accusations. They also went to my Discord server to try and get more to cop the style. Am I allowed to post a video essay I made that was inspired by Blair's channel or is there like no self-promotion allowed? Also, is there any way I can talk to one of the video editors? I edit for Legal Eagle and I wanted to know how they did a specific effect. This is literally just politely asking. And this is what she used. Now keep in mind, we right above, we have evidence this was not what they were asking about. They were asking about a different effect. And yet down below, this is what she says was apparently plagiarism here. This. Th this has a tear, and this has a completely different style of, tw of tear. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, that does not rise to the level of plagiarism. Here's the other one. This is her video, and this is their video. A highlighter effect, which is a plugin that every single, like, that any person can download off the internet, and these don't even look the same. This one has, like, a very clean computer-like effect, and this one looks like it's done by a marker. They don't even look even remotely alike. To be honest, I wouldn't have believed any of this was trying to replicate my videos if not for the email and Discord stuff that was done preemptive to their video coming out. Like, talk about, can I copy your homework? Yeah, but just make it a little different, shaking my head. Okay. Let's continue the video now. Interviews, videos, documentaries, academic essays, and so on and so forth. As video essayists, this is a core concept to both Harris and myself. Before I get into the accusation itself, I want to address the topic of plagiarism. And that word has been tossed around a ton, and it's not something to be taken lightly. And just, I just want to take a minute Just to remember, Blair was the one who accused plagiarism to begin with. So Blair was the one tossing it around and taking it lightly, even in this video with her apology that I did not think was very good, that's fine. People make bad apologies, but still, uh, she was the one who was tossing it around. To define this word, on screen are definitions for the word plagiarism as defined by Merriam-Webster, Dictionary.com, and the University of Oxford. I'm showing multiple sources defining plagiarism, but the overall definition is going to boil down to this. Plagiarism is to take someone else's idea as their own or to not credit the source. With that definition being clearly identified, let's go ahead and take a look at what Harris brought to the Twitter table. Harris posted this video saying, and I quote, per Notice right here on the one that she shows on the screen, plagiarism is presenting work or ideas from another source as your own with or without consent of the original author by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. Without full acknowledgement. That is the important part. We'll get there. Plagiarism, Let's go. But the overall definition is to not credit the source. 
With that definition being clearly identified, let's go ahead and take a look at what Harris brought to the Twitter table. Harris posted this video saying, and I quote, Personally, at Illuminati, I would define plagiarism as something a bit more specific. For example, copying someone else's documentary directly into your script, end quote. However, in his own video, he shows where I'm audibly quoting a direct line from the documentary, and even visually, you can see it on the screen with the quotation marks. Additionally, you can even see the dual ellipses on either end of that quote, indicating that more of that source was being cited. When you go to my sourcing page for this particular episode, you can also see that the documentary is listed as a source. It has been three years since I posted this episode, and I've been really grateful to be able to continually learn and grow with time. Since then, I've learned to be much more overt and obvious with citations, something that may not have been perfectly clear to me three years ago. I apologize for the oversight of not making that quote more clear. At the time of recording, it was really obvious to me that it was a citation of the documentary, especially in full context of that section of my video, because that section was wholly dedicated to Brian Deere's work. And for some clarification, I would like to provide both you and Harris with the script that I was working off of. It will be available in the Google Drive. While I believe- But this doesn't actually, this doesn't actually answer the question. Um, of course, uh, H. Bomber guy was not making a serious accusation of plagiarism. He was doing a, you seem like a hypocrite. Um, but also, having a document at the bottom that has a citation that you don't show on the screen is not full acknowledgement, okay? I'll keep an eye on that. I haven't, I haven't talked, I haven't seen that one. I'll, I'll take a look at it. Uh, but, but anyway, let's, let's, it's Prager U shit. Yes, I know it is a little bit Prager U shit. Um, but again, this doesn't answer what this, this doesn't debunk plagiarism. If you don't properly cite, you may as it's the same, it's, it's nearly as like not properly citing something is almost as bad, especially if you are using verbatim the words from another documentary. Uh, uh that's very bad. The entire... This is not a good answer. I believe emphasizing the key phrase of the quote about stopping injections on autistic children was, and still is, very important to point out, the quote should have been fully displayed on screen. This was certainly a poor editing choice, and it's an editing style that I no longer utilize, sure. but it's most certainly not plagiarism. But with that being said, I still want to take accountability where it's needed, so I still would like to apologize for the citation not being made more clear visually in that video. Harris, I am also someone who takes plagiarism seriously, and I do see where your criticism comes from, but unfortunately, this was simply an oversight on an editing error, but not an act of plagiarism. To me, at the time of the recording, the entire section was very obviously a citation. And none of this matters. None of this matters because H Bomber guy wasn't seriously accusing you of plagiarism. You seriously accuse, you've in very seriously accused Legal Eagle of plagiarism. And H Bomber guy made a joke saying, actually, you, what you do seems more like plagiarism. Even Whatever. as seen in it the doesn't script, matter. It doesn't there matter. was a visual change to break up the many words that would otherwise be just chunked onto the screen, which looking back at it, despite not being so visually appealing to have tons of words on the screen, this should have been an opportunity to provide that full quote to avoid any confusion like this whatsoever. Based on the definition of the word plagiarism, his claims are simply false. Not only is the source quoted on screen, it's also cited in the sources list, which again, I will provide in the Google Drive. As a more seasoned video essayist now, I've been lucky that I'm able to continue learning how to showcase facts and other relevant materials in an interesting and educational way and I'm really excited that I get to continue doing that. I'd like to think that in the last three years, myself and my team have grown to create better content that is educational and entertaining, and this is clearly an example of how we have improved since that time. I have nothing but love for everyone on my team, from editors, writers, artists, and even some of the not so fun kind of clerical duties like payroll. I'm Pay attention to that, okay? Okay? always going to have their back, even if sometimes things slip through the cracks. We're a team of people who make human mistakes. We're going to continue to improve content as the years continue, and we'll always be able to learn and improve from the past.
Here we go. Before I address any one person individually, I want to kind of cover everything in a general and broader scope regarding Sad Milk. Sad Milk was a collaboration channel started by six friends in 2020. Six. It was kind of essentially group Reddit readings and just looking at cringe things online and reacting to it. It was no big deal on the surface. This channel and this project was just meant to be something goofy, easy, and kind of cringy, but a shared channel that we could all get a kick out of. It was just supposed to be a bunch of friends hanging out, reacting to funny images, and just having a good time together. I mean, the channel name was literally called Sad Milk, so it wasn't really something that anyone was taking too seriously. Discussing Sad Milk now in current day is always a little bit bittersweet for me. It was a fun project among friends that turned sour. The issues I'm about to address cost me some of my closest friends at that time. When the Sad Milk channel was formed, I initially took the lead and I made the channel, I made the Discord, I got my mods from my server to help run the new Discord, I hired and managed video editors to help us produce more content. I was the one who was sourcing the topics and files for each video, and I was the one who had set the schedules for recording too. The reality of the situation was this, with creators in different time zones, it was logistically pretty hard to get everyone together at one place in one time. We tried to do it organically multiple times, but unfortunately someone would always end up missing from the recordings. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into a YouTube channel, and I bore the brunt of it for this project. And it wasn't something that I was doing to have total control as some members have suggested. I manage the schedules. Oh, wait a second. Maybe I forgot something, hold on. I may have made a small mistake myself. I may have forgotten a thread. Hold on a second. Let me double check. May have made a, a small a small timeline mistake. I thought that this thread happened after this. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me get this. This is from the 27th. Hold on a second. No, wait, 24th, sorry. Here we go. Yep, I got the timeline slightly wrong on this. I thought this came afterwards. Okay, let me bring, let me go, let's go through this real quick. My, my bad, I got the timeline on this particular one. So we have one more little thread we have to go through because I didn't realize she addressed it in this video. That's a small error on my part. Yeah, unsubscribe. My timeline was slightly fucked up on the multi-threads. This is Oz Media. Oz Media was the uh, was another uh, of the six collaborators. Now you'll notice that uh, all of the collaborators involved with Sad Milk, except for Oz Media and Blair, left the project. Um, Oz Media is going to become a very important individual as this goes on, but they also wrote a thread uh, when the click and, uh, and this was a, a day after the, clicks the click and wonders thread. So we're gonna read this real quick. <clears throat> I think it's time I actually speak out on the current Twitter threads regarding sad milk in uh, in 2020 to 2021. I cannot express how scared I am to do this, the fear I have in my gut to even speak out. However, I do feel it's important to say my piece on this subject matter. Yeah, it's a mess, but the tweet threads posted by Wonder and Click and what they have stated about Sad Milk is the truth. I will be adding those threads below. The whole project was a mess from start to finish. I really wish I didn't need to do this with the flurry of DMs I've been getting. I don't have a choice. Blair, I'm sorry, but you have hurt me. I need to speak without being told by you, oh, I'm just the villain, I'm always in the wrong, or something along those li lines. Words I have heard from you consistently. I want to be heard for once. I need to clear my mind and conscience after holding this in for two years. Forgive me, but this is what needs to be done. When looking at the whole of the project, it was mostly controlled and run by Blair. 
Her main worry was that because of her, in her words, lack of personality, she felt as though her contribution to Sad Milk needed to be the managerial bureaucracy behind the scenes to justify her presence. This led to a defensive approach when anyone would attempt to assist with the nitty gritty behind the scenes, despite her claiming that no one wanted to help her. One of the factors she claims to be the final nail in the coffin of Sad Milk Blair was indeed the aggressor. She always has been. As an example of this behavior, look at the legal eagle situation. Blair has the habit of starting fights, but will almost never publicly apologize if proven wrong. She will instead hide behind a private ap apology and from my perspective, act as though this makes everything better. After all, she would express to me that admitting error would only make her look stupid and weak. This will be followed by her blocking people on Twitter, silencing her detractors through YouTube channel bans, deleting comments, and putting her accounts on the download to prevent interaction. So this is three contributing members uh, of Sad Milk, all of whom left on different terms. The Click left on bad terms, claiming that they were yelled at and that they felt like it was a toxic environment. Wonder left Sad Milk... Um, at a, at a much later point, we'll discover they were fired for a bunch of stuff. We're going to get to that. And Oz Media never left Sad Milk. Oz Media was a part of Sad Milk until the end, as far as I understand it. Like, at least, as uh, they were on for the longest of any of these members. So, all three of these members who left at varying points of the project all verify that individually are willing to say that yes blair used the official accounts to disparage uh, and manipulate the messages about former collaborators in my opinion that is fairly credible i find it uh stretches a uh, belief that three completely different people with different experiences with the project would all say yes i attest it is true that the channel was used to disparage delete comments, manipulate the messages, and 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 basically purport negative or promote negative uh, uh, reputational, uh, uh, you know, a, a negative reputation about former collaborators with the channel. Oz Media was Illuminati's ex-fiance. Yes, we're going to get there. We're going to get there. We haven't got there. For example, on Sad Milk, she would blacklist former collaborators from being mentioned, but manually approve hateful comments towards them, which in my opinion were specifically ones which instead praised her or the remaining members, including me. Oz Media is admitting that they were the beneficiary of this behavior. This is her MO. It has been for the four years that I've known her. It actually perfectly ties into how we first met and began to be on speaking terms in April of 2019. Sad Milk was very much like this. At the first sign of dissonance, her response was to have me confront OT and Click with a list of talking points in an attempt to show them how wrong they were, which I accepted. This brings me to, well, me. What is missing from both Click and Wonder's threads is the fact that I acted as Blair's front runner. Anything Blair needed to say went through me first. Essentially, I acted as a spokesman. This was a common factor in our relationship. I would always act as a filter to keep her out of drama or from saying things that would be seen as offensive or a kindle for a larger fire. I stopped doing this in January. This does not excuse me from protecting her for this long, but it is the truth. I could take the approach and say that I was manipulated, which perhaps I was, but I still knew that what I was doing was wrong. I always did, and it always hurt. It left a huge black mark on my spirit and my ability to feel comfortable in my own skin. I had moved to Colorado, got a house, and I lived with her at the time. So two collaborators, two collaborators, both of which are attesting to certain uh, very abusive and dirty behaviors, uh, uh, both lived with her in a what appears to be some kind of attempted YouTuber house. Again, the red flag has progressed into the danger zone. This is no longer a red flag. It is now an uh-oh. It is now a oh god. She was in my life every day and I would hear theories and villainous explanations directed at anyone who wronged her. It was hard to avoid, let alone not fall for them. I believed it was my responsibility to protect my friend from something that in my view was clearly hurting her, something that I felt was eating at her and making her daily life wor worse. Things which in hindsight could have been solved with a conversation, but she was unwilling. 
Instead, the conspiring, backstabbing, and rumor machine were put into full swing. I, as much as Wonder and Salty, were forced by Blair to choose between her or Click and OT. Of course I chose the person I lived with. What was I going to do? Mean, move again? I guess I could have. Once I chose my side, I was met with praise and adoration from her and her mod staff. It was at the time I felt like I was making the right decision. Fuck man, boy was I wrong. I've lost so many friends, isolated myself, been at her side despite feeling like my connections to the world were being severed. I always acted as her talking piece from yelling at one topic to berating click and the other things I did in service of someone who at the time I believed every word of. I trusted Blair, Blair to hell and back and I thought I was doing good. I have learned since then through both self-reflection and conversation with old friends just how much I was unintentionally, hopefully, used. There, of course, is more, much more, more than I could ever hope to cram into this stupid Twitter thread, and I know I'm going to get angry DMs and phone calls. Blair, I need you to know that you hurt me more than you realize. I know you're scanning this and having your team read over it, maybe even looking at sending me a legal threat as you prayed around to do so. But I want to, you to apologize for once in your life and take accountability. Please, Blair, you would rather paint the world red than admit that you have a fault. Okay, so now, now we are caught up on this particular thread. I apologize. I thought that this came after this video, but it did not. There we go. The timeline has been righted. So once again, this is a thread that mostly discusses personal issues that this creator had uh, with Blair. Uh, some of which appear to have been, at least according to three separate people who were formerly involved in the Sad Milk Project, have been litigated by Blair in the public eye via the official Sad Milk channel. So I, I have seen a lot of people claiming that this is some sort of situation of like disgruntled former employees, but they were collaborators. And in some cases, they were also employees. It is messy, I will grant that. But this does not seem to me to be a situation of three former disgruntled employees. The, the situation is different for all three of these individuals and all of them attest to having personally witnessed Blair use the official Sad Milk account to damage the reputations and careers of these three people. And with a few exceptions, these threads focus on their interpersonal struggles and center around one thing, the primary allegation that has been levied against Blair by all three of these people is manipulating messaging to damage the reputation of former collaborators, which in my opinion is a very unprofessional and very bad thing to do for a number of reasons. Um, people should be able to exit a project with you without you destroying them. It's actually a bad thing to go out of your way to personally harm someone just because they stopped working on a project that you're involved with, okay? Um, it's, I think that that's a bad thing. And we have three separate former collaborators who are attesting that this is what happened, that there was basically a use of the official platforms, a use of Blair's large platforms to damage people who didn't do what she wanted to the degree that she wouldn't even functionally let them leave the project peacefully. The way that it played out, um, they were targeted just for leaving the project. That is a very bad thing. That is a abusive situation. That is an abusive workplace. If you can't leave a project of your own volition, um, we can all acknowledge that uh, w many workplaces are already abusive by the simple nature of them existing in a system where you have to have money in order to eat. But this goes a step further. This means y you're being targeted uh, 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 at the very least, the, uh, the evidence that we've seen so far, the very least on a reputational level, uh, just for no longer wanting to be involved with the content creator who all three of these people said they felt mistreated by. And here's the thing, you don't need to have evidence to say that you felt mistreated by someone. You're allowed to feel like somebody didn't treat you well and, that, and saying that somebody didn't treat you well is not a career ending allegation, nor is it a serious allegation. It is a personal claim. You see what I mean? Okay, 
Now that we've read that, let us continue with this video. In the editors because it was just something that needed to be done. People weren't stepping up to the plate and I did and I ultimately bit off more than I could chew. It was a lot of work if we're being honest and I was beginning to burn out pretty quickly. Had I known how I would have been treated through this channel and afterwards, I never would have joined this project. This is something that struck me as very strange the first time I saw this video, which is to say, um, all, th all three of the former members said that it was supposed to be a fun project that wasn't supposed to be overwhelming. Blair herself said that it was her who was driving, uh, the, was driving the pressure to create the project. And she's saying that she was driving herself into burnout, but somehow it's their fault. All of these other people, by her own admission and by their admission, said that they didn't want it to be a high pressure project. And it appears, according to Blair herself, that she was the one that was like trying to push the grind set mentality, that was trying to like push that but it was burning her out and the other members of the group were not interested in taking it to that level. So to me, it sounds like this is a problem that Blair created that other members weren't happy with, that she could have just said, no, okay, I'm not gonna do that work if nobody's interested in taking it that seriously. Do you see what I mean? This was something that struck me the first time I watched this and I, and I, I think that my initial impression there you know, hold strong. Like, let, let's just let's listen, listen to this one more time real quick. And it wasn't something that I was doing to have total control of recording. To do it organically multiple times, but unfortunately someone would always end up missing from the recordings. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into a YouTube channel and I bore the brunt of it for this project. And it wasn't something that I was doing to have total control as some members have suggested. I managed the schedules and the editors because it was just something that needed to be done. People weren't stepping up to the plate and I did and I ultimately bit off more than I could chew. It was a lot of work if we're being honest and I was beginning to burn out pretty quickly. Had I known how I would have been treated through I'm this saying? channel and afterwards, I never would have joined this project. Essentially, everyone in the group had two main responsibilities for Sad Milk. The first was that you had to show up to the scheduled recording, and the second was you had to pay your portion of the editor's fees as they arise. After the editors were paid, any earnings that were left in the channel were split into six equal pieces for each person. Since this was a project among friends, we all initially agreed to just split the earnings six ways, even though I was taking on some extra responsibilities. When it was time to pay the editors, I wasn't answered or told that they would just get it to me later. I had to do this at various points with a vast majority of the members of the group. They would eventually get around to reimburse. Okay, so this is a lot of text. This is a lot of text, okay? Reached the credit limit, had a bunch of outgoing stuff for the company, and sad milk fell on the wrong side. I will transfer it as soon as checked off the outstanding stuff when I get the paperwork in a couple of days. So this appears to be one incident, okay? This is oh, this is uh, March 30th, 2020, and March 31st, 2020. So click is late on a payment. Illuminati gets mad about it here. about the delay. The click says, I'm aware and I apologize. I'll tell you what, I'll transfer the money from my own account and figure out the expense replacement later. I should have done so sooner. It's not fair for someone else had money out of pocket because of my slow bank. I'll send it today. I never intended for sad milk to be a back burner thing and I hope it doesn't leave that as a lasting impression. So this is one incident that she's provided. She is alleged that people were not paying. She's alleged that all of the other members were not paying their bills and she has provided one incident of the click not paying his bill and immediately profusely apologizing. I will make sure not to be late on anything like this in the future. I assure you it's a one-time thing. Okay, so... This is a pretty... that Saying that you weren't, do, you weren't paying your financial responsibility is a pretty major allegation, which she has said the other members were involved in and has only provided evidence in a video for click on one occasion. Hmm. Asking me only after I expressed in group meetings how I was upset that I have to do everything and I also got stuck footing the bill too. What quickly transpired was that members either couldn't or wouldn't reimburse me for the editors. 
for e clarity. Evidence, evidence needed. This is an accusation that they were stealing money from you and the company functionally. If if so, okay, God. So do you see how I said that the allegations start to get very serious? That in the first one, we have mostly interpersonal allegations. The biggest allegations were that Blair was a jerk and that, uh, and that Blair reputationally damaged them. The claim of reputation damage is acknowledged by at least three of the former members. Half of the team said, we witnessed Blair using the official account to damage our reputations. However, she is now accusing the team, without saying who on the team, of not paying their fair share of their obligations, of their monetary obligations, and she provided exactly one receipt that shows that the click actually did pay, he was just late. And on top of all of this, by her own admission, she was the one driving this push. Real quick, just as a thought experiment, I want you to imagine that you sign up for a fun project with your friends. Let's say it's a D&D &D group, okay? We'll just do a D&D &D group. Let's say you sign up to do a D&D &D group with your friends, and it's supposed to be a fun thing, uh, and you all agree to show up on a certain time of the week, and you all agree uh, to share snack money between you, okay? And then one member of the group uh, starts to say, we need to have more sessions. We need to have two sessions and then three sessions a week. And then every single session, they're ordering like the most expensive pizza in town. And then the next time, the most expensive fish in town. And then the most expensive curry in town. And saying, we have to split it six ways. You guys agreed that we'll meet up on time and that will share the expenses. So that's a situation where one member is driving the increased costs and also is driving the increased commitment. And that seems to be, by Blair's own admission, what was happening here. Blair said that the other members were not interested in taking this project as seriously as she wanted to. She was pushing them to make more videos. She was pushing them to pay more editors. She was pushing them to do these things and then was getting frustrated when they couldn't do it. Now, of course, uh, there is going to be more information on this as time goes on, but not all of these members had established channels like she did. Keep in mind that at the time that this was all happening, Blair's channel was the largest by a long shot. I do want to disclose that we as a group later revised our agreement after paying all editors and creative freelancers that 5% of remaining earnings would go directly to me for the administrative work that I was doing. After that, the remaining earnings would then be split amongst the group evenly. Ultimately, the channel made very little and it actually cost a lot more than we earned a majority of the time. Something the click brought up in his Twitter okay. thread was that I was- But again, that everybody else has stated in, in, and also Blair explicitly stated this, this was supposed to be a fun project. So who was driving the costs going up so high? Well, by Blair's own admission, it was Blair. Blair was taking it seriously and driving the project forward by Blair's own admission. So all of these people who signed up for a fun project are now getting roped into having to pay money. angry and yelled in a meeting, but what he didn't share was the context of that meeting. As I've previously stated, the scheduling and money issues had been an ongoing problem. In the meeting no, that no he vaguely provided. references on Twitter, this is what actually happened. I had become more and more frustrated about how I was doing all of the work, I was doing all of the maintenance, and then I was also having to financially foot the bill to the project. As I said, it was burning me out pretty quickly and I was thinking about leaving the group. Ozmedia suggests trans girl Jade says she had more money and more subscribers than the other five members combined. I don't know about the truth about the money, but I do believe it is true that at the time she had more subscribers than all of the other members combined. I do believe that's true. Suggested that he tried to run the meeting and I not attend, and I agreed. But one topic and click were very insistent that I be there, even though I said I was not ready to talk and I needed more time. 
So when I entered the call, I tried to let everyone know that I was uncomfortable with having this conversation and I was not ready to have it. Again, I would like to point out that at this point in time, these were still my friends. These were people that I liked and cared about. Letting your- Sea Snake Cheery says the click actually responded to a video filled, responded with a video filled with evidence. We'll be watching that next, don't you worry. The click video, yeah, we gotta continue though. Friends know, hey, I'm not okay right now. I'm really stressed and hurt. While you all get to stream, I still have to pick up the pieces to keep this channel going is a really difficult conversation to have. Before the meeting started, I was told that if I didn't show up, that they would not have the conversation with me and everything would just stagnate. So I tried to put the channel and my friend's needs above my own. Reluctantly, mm. I joined the conversation and as I was speaking, one topic talked over me and out of frustration of this happening yet again, I raised my voice and said, can you shut up and let me talk for once? And he left the call and that's the last time I ever spoke with him. Looking back at it now, I should not have spoken to my friend like that. I felt that I wasn't given time to process and think things through and in process of, emotion vomit came out. One topic, I would like to apologize for that, this time publicly. Clearly, this was a situation that affected mm. all of us very deeply and personally, and this was an exciting idea, but one that never really took off the way I think we thought it could. To all of the members of Sad Milk, I just want to say that I'm very sorry that I caused you stress throughout this project. Hmm. I want to take a couple minutes to bring up the clip. Okay, to summarize that section, she provided no evidence that people weren't paying for, for the bills. She, by her own admission, was responsible for driving up the bills in the project that every other member was, uh, was under the understanding that this was supposed to be a fun side project for them to do things together with and uh, not supposed to be some kind of like uh, serious business or whatever. Every other member has attested to that. Um, with the exception of uh, the one, oh, I always forget the name of the one who didn't talk on this at all. That member, as to, to my knowledge, has remained silent. Um, uh, anyway, uh, the allegations of not paying back the company is a pretty major allegation and no evidence was provided for that. So she apologizes, but then jumps into attack mode. This entire video is, well, let's just keep watching. Let's go. And the many claims that he made on Twitter recently. Yes, the clip also brings I will up point out that now we have her own admission and three other members saying that she screamed at or, or shouted over another member of the group for a project that was supposed to be a fun, fun project that she was driving up the cost for by her own admission and by her own admission that she was responsible for increasing the intensity of the schedule. It sounds like Indeed, this was a very toxic work environment, and it sounds like the toxic work environment was created by Blair. And it seems like she admitted that in her own words, even if she doesn't see it that way. How, as he puts it, a very convenient series of videos resurfaced with him saying some not so savory things after he left Sad Milk. His old videos, as he puts it, aged like milk. They did. I'm not going to dive into it further. The information's out there if you so choose to look. And as Click stated, those videos are 11 to 14 years old. And to be perfectly clear here, those videos are not any of the reasons as to why we split ways in Sad Milk as Click tries to insinuate. Even back in 2020, I had stated that those- Wait, he didn't say that. He didn't say that. We just read the thread, he didn't say that. He said that those videos were used to disparage him after he left Sad Milk. So she's just wrong there. That's just, he didn't make that claim. She's... Videos had nothing to do with the ending of Sad Milk. I was actually unaware of those videos at the time of our friendship, but had I been aware of them, that friendship would have likely ended Am I sooner. wrong? Unfortunately, I don't think he said that. when those videos surfaced, it wasn't really all that shocking he to left. me as Oz He said, hold on, let me just double check this real quick. Hold on, I've got the thread right here. Let's take a look real quick and we'll make sure that's what he said. Because I don't think that's what he said. I believe, hold on, we'll go right here. We'll look at it right now. Here's the thread. Hold on, where's the videos? When people started questioning that maybe she was the reason everyone left, there was a very convenient updigging of, of 11 to 14 year old videos of me. 
Yeah, he didn't say that. He explicitly, he left because of the fight that happened that she admitted when she yelled at the other member. He left at the same time as that. He said, here, back up here, and they've all agreed that that was when it happened. I left along with several under member, m members, half the group at the time. They lost three members there when that yelling happened. And then later, so she just is wrong. She just lied about what he said. And she showed the thread on the stream and she misrepresented what he said. Media and I had actually talked about how Click had been using the Arsler while we played games together. I thought, or I wanted to assume that I had misheard, but Oz said that he was uncomfortable with it and said something, but the language continued. Click, you are right. Those videos in question are old, and at this point, they're kind of irrelevant. People can learn and people can change. That being said, at the time in 2020, Click was still using horrifying language and slurs that have long been deemed unacceptable. I'd now like to address the Click's claims that I had any involvement in trying to gain control of his Discord server. So, so I think what she's referring to is the R slur was that in 2020, the click still used the R slur. That's, I think that's what she means by horrifying slurs. Now, I want to point out no evidence. She provides no evidence whatsoever in this segment. She accuses him of using horrifying language and slurs and provides zero receipts for that. None. There was no receipts provided here. Interesting. An interesting move, isn't it? To make an accusation that someone is using slurs, not just a slur, but slurs and horrifying language, no evidence provided. Now I'll point out also, none of the other people accused her of anything like that. Everything that they accused her of was interpersonal with the exception of all of them saying that she used official accounts to disparage them. She said the line, if I knew he said this language, I would not have been friends with him in the first place. But but doesn't didn't we already establish that she did know that she made a she made a, a, a team with him because they were familiar with each other's whatever. It doesn't matter. That's such a dumb throwaway. Let's go by, as he says, tossing around accusations yeah, at lying. staff. Yeah, yeah. It seems pretty obvious here that she's not being straightforward, that she's not being honest and she's trying to save face here. Because unfortunately, there were some truly sinister things occurring in the Clicks Discord that were brought to my attention. For this next section, I would like to provide a trigger warning. There will be mentions of explicit sexual language, mentions of pedophilia, graphic imagery, and inappropriate behavior around minors. Before I go any further oh into this, boy, I want to mention that there's going to be resources in my description box regarding what I'm about to discuss now. I do think it's relevant to bring up that in 2019, the Clicks channel was terminated by YouTube for sexual content. At the time, a few YouTubers, including myself and Oz Media, band together to help reinstate Clicks channel. Oz spoke to his MCN representative, and I spoke with YouTube directly. This is something that I now look back on with so much regret. Had I known at the time what was going on behind the scenes, I never would have participated in helping Click with his channel. Okay. So, Click got his channel falsely removed, and now she's saying she regrets using her connections at YouTube. So she does admit that she has connections at YouTube, according to her own words, and that she regrets using them to help him clear his false ban. Let's find out the reasoning for why she says that. Allow me to explain the situation a little bit. The Click and I had shared Discord moderators around the time of Sad Milk being created. Due to the Click's inaction, our shared moderators had brought a situation in his server to my attention, a situation involving pedophilia. In Click's Discord, there was a 19-year-old bragging about- Here's where it's going to get very serious. ...about a 12-year-old that he was claiming to be involved with. A moderator reached out to get more information on this situation. This 19-year-old then reiterates, and I am directly quoting this here, I talked with my therapist about it, even too, and he told me as long as I don't touch her, it's okay. Click and his team did not pursue any immediate action to ban, restrict, or report this individual. So those shared mods came to me, and they told me that they were uncomfortable. 
So we used this individual's ID number and we banned them from the SadMilk server and from my server, and we reported them to Discord's trust and safety team who we hope did pursue this further. Then I went to contact Click to see what was going on. And it was mainly because I didn't want to believe that he would blow off someone clearly discussing such an inappropriate relationship. In fact, this was right off the heels of one of his admins sharing pornographic content to people that they knew were minors. One thing that I would like to point out here is how these users were pushing pornographic materials to a minor who explicitly states that their parent is in the room with them so they were hiding their phone. I would like to point out that a- Now this is a pretty huge allegation here. What, what Illuminati has alleged is that the click ignored and by implication fostered an environment of pedophilic pred predation in his server. Personally, I think that there needs to be a lot of evidence provided for this. So let's find out if evidence is, is, is proffered, if evidence is brought forward uh, for us to look at for this particular situation. Let's take a look. Common tactic for abusers who are attempting to groom children is that they expose them to pornography and other sexual content in an attempt to desensitize the child. I'll provide Rain's page on grooming for further information. And if you're a child currently in a similar situation, I urge you to speak to a trusted adult or authorities. And again, resources will be provided below. Having to relook at these messages again still makes my stomach turn even three years later. When Click didn't initially take action, I switched tactics with him and I called one topic, who was and still is to my understanding, one of the Click's closest friends on social media. I got into a call with both of them and I shared these files with them. And one topic opened the files, he was horrified, and he said, and I quote, I've read one and I don't want access to those screenshots. It was after this conversation that Click took action and reported and removed that individual from his server. I've read one and I don't want access to those. He was horrible. Both of them. So hold on a second. Action. Let's see if we can get the date on these real quick. Parent is in the room. So this incident was like two months prior to their conversation. Hold on. This incident was, we have no date for this incident. We have no date or timeline on when this happened. Okay, just so we're clear, we have no timeline on this. Into a call with both of them, and I shared the quote, that Click took action and reported and removed that individual from his server. I really wouldn't lightly make accusations like this unless I had seen them for myself. And let me be abundantly clear here, I am not trying to accuse the click of pedophilia, nor do I have any reason to believe that he could be a pedophile. However, he cultivated an environment that was a breeding ground for inappropriate behavior with minors to occur and- An explicit, explicit allegation that the click was cultivating a dangerous pedophilic environment for minors. That is a massive allegation. Massive That's exactly allegation. what happened. Having our shared moderators approach me in my server about this very serious situation in his server was extremely uncomfortable, but something the moderation team felt needed action that was not being taken. Furthermore, referring to these shared moderators that we had as spies, as he said on Twitter, it only dismisses the fact that he allowed this sexually explicit language to occur around. He allowed sexually explicit language to occur around minors. Remember this language, everybody. This is a very direct allegation that the click allowed this to happen around minors. It didn't just happen, he allowed it, okay? Keep that, that, that allegation in mind. Minors, he referred to them as spies, which only shows that he didn't really see any issue with the state of his server. Mark, I'm going to address you directly here. On your Discord server that had, and likely still has, minors present, you as an adult need to do the right thing and actually pay attention to what goes down in your server or ensure a team will take action against inappropriate behavior. I am sorry to those minors who were spoken to in such an inappropriate way. You were, and yes, some of you- Yes, that's the click's real name, which I think is a weird thing to bring up here. Likely are still children. Adults should not be having sexually charged conversations with you or sharing sexually explicit photos with you. 
Hold on a second. That didn't happen. Notice the language here. She says, oh, I'm not calling him a pedophile. Adults should not be having sexually charged conversation. Hold on, hold on. Let's see here. I want to listen to this again real quick. Minors present, you as an adult need to do the right thing and actually pay attention to what goes down in your server or ensure a team will take action against inappropriate behavior. I am sorry to those minors who were spoken to in such an inappropriate way. You were, and some of you likely are, still children. Adults should not be having sexually charged conversations with you or sharing sexually explicit photos with you. This is and always has been okay. unacceptable. I will be providing links in the description box for a few resources for anyone who has been negatively impacted by these events. I did what I could. Yeah, I'm not calling him a pedophile. I'm just saying that I'm just vaguely gesturing at him being responsible for the actions of pedophiles. And keep in mind, the only image we have... Now, she said that that these mods were sending sexually explicit messages to children. But the, we didn't actually get very good evidence of that. We saw an image of what appeared to be a chat room, but we have no idea the context of that yet. But I wish I could have done more. Yeah, remember, this is supposed to be an apology video. Yeah, I know, right? Weird, huh? Let's keep going. And I wish that the click had more accountability of his own server. I also hope that since my falling out with Click, that he has learned from his past errors and worked to better himself. I hope that he and his current moderation team are holding themselves to a higher standard. The past three years have been challenging to all of us, and I think it's safe to say that living through a global pandemic has changed us in one way or another. Click, I hope you have learned to not tolerate such behavior in your server. I hope that you have learned from this and that you'll continue to strive to do better. All of this is implying he was tolerating it, tolerating it in the first place, which we only have Blair's word on. The, the, the screenshots provided here do not have dates and times. We don't know if what she's saying is actually true. We only have her word to go on for an allegation that he was facilitating and tolerating pedophilia in his server. That he was facilitating grooming and 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 predation on children a massive criminal life ruining allegation and we don't even have a timeline provided by blair i truly regret ever being friends with you and i hope that i can finally close the door on that chapter in my life i want nothing to do with you and i can only hope that i will no longer be associated with you after all of this Oh, Retcon, I have bad news for you. Uh, I'm, I hope you rest well, but this is going to get so much worse. You see, my lovely imps, we are on a long hike, and what we have been on so far is the easy part of the hike. It's like when you're walking through the meadows of flowers, but you see that there's like this winding road up a rock wall that you have to do next. The part where your thighs and your calves and your feet are gonna start burning and your lungs are gonna be pumping to try and get all the air that you can. That's where we're heading into right just now. Now, thankfully, we are we are we have a, t a nice tight group we've got a nice hiking group of about 527 people together hiking up drama mountain right now and we're all going to be very safe but i will tell you it's about to get very grueling so now would be the perfect opportunity to support the channel by pressing the like button down below by taking a breath and leaving a nice comment if you're watching this video in the future comments mean the world to the channel if you want my channel to be bigger and better please do so and also to press subscribe down below i put in a lot of work and passion into my channel and the support means the world to me thank you very much let us continue our hike up drama mountain this is like a pilgrimage it's a big hike let's go When it comes to discussing Wonderstruck, his actions are some of the most confusing I've had to deal with. I'm going to address his concerns, though a lot of it is fairly tricky since he hinges his accusations on anecdotal commentary. In responding to his baseless- So have you. Not notably, so has Blair. 
Pete's claims, I will provide evidence as necessary, as well as point out when things I mention are anecdotal. So I completely understand if you choose to dismiss my anecdotal commentary as it arises. Thank you, Anthony Shore. His sure. thread on Twitter Appreciate makes many that. claims about who I am as a person and how I've treated him. I hope to come at this with a level head and a very thorough explanation of events. We read this thread. This thread should be fresh in your mind. So let's see if Blair correctly characterizes the thread and if she responds in a reasonable manner. With that being said, let's start with Wonder's accusation of wage theft. That's a big one and it's important. I talk often about how paying your people is important. So I know how ironic it must look to have that accusation thrown back at me. To begin, let me explain Wonder's employment history with me. During Sad Milk, all of us were contractors to that channel. We were paid as contractors so we could handle taxes in our respective countries on our own as not all members were American citizens. As many of you are aware- Actually, wait a second. I have a better idea. I have a better idea. We should watch the clicks video response before we get into the wonder thing. I think that actually would be a wiser way and a better way to, for us to keep the evidence fresh in our mind. I think it actually would make sense for us to pause here before we get into the wonder conversation and watch the clicks response. Yeah, everybody seems to be supporting that. I think that's a good idea. All right, we're gonna do that instead. Let me grab that video and we're gonna swap over. I know that we're hopping over, but I think this will be actually much better to what I'm trying to accomplish, which is to keep this whole story correct in everybody's mind so we have a correct timeline and everything i've done as you have t as you can tell i've i've really put a lot of effort into making sure that we are doing this in an order that is understandable so that the facts and the actual evidence is in people's minds so we can think about this okay 